What's up guys, so today um, I'm going to do a tutorial on uh, Linux, um, the basic uh, file structures. Um, I hope this turns out okay, this is like the third time I've shot this video. Uh, you can see that the processor is kind of, uh, I'm compiling video or getting it from the little Windows Movie Maker, so hope it turns out okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and, I'm just going to go ahead and log into one of my servers, we'll run through the Shakir shell. And this is just going to go into one of my Dell servers that's running Ubuntu Server 12.10. So, here we go. Alright, so basically, um, I'm going to kind of compare this to Windows a lot because a lot of people are familiar with the Windows file system. So, uh, let's go ahead and start by doing that. If we go um, and we bring up a Windows file system, we can see that normally you have it's broken up into mean you have drives mainly those are your overall storage and this is how the whole system's running so you have your C drive which is your main drive that holds everything and uh, your operating system is the most important piece that's what holds what your computer runs on and it also holds a lot of associated files for your programs and whatever you may want to store on onto that drive you also have like other disks you have, you know, like your uh, optical drive um, and, you know, maybe USB drives or other drives that may be connected to the system. But the main thing that your operating system is on is recognizes the C drive normally in Windows. And then inside here you have a few uh, programs that are files that normally come with Windows. So um, you have the program files and program files x86 if you're running the 64-bit version. So these are just where like all your programs are stored, you know. Then you have um, your users, and those are the users that'd be user documents, user information, uh, pictures, photos, and all that. And you can see that it's locked, so it's secure. And then you have the Windows folder. Now the Windows folder is what holds everything to do with Windows. Uh, all the stuff that is in the Windows operating system is in that folder. So this is sort of your actual operating system. And it's going to hold stuff that, you know, is used to actually boot into Windows when you start the machine. So, um, for Linux, um, you have, uh, we're going to go ahead and just ls here. Now, when you log in, you log into your account. So, it's like me basically logging in. And let me just go back there real quick. And it's going into C, Users, and then Jacob. And this would be where you start off in Linux, when you log in as, into your account. Now, what's different about Windows and Linux automatically is the file system and how the hard drives are recognized. So, for Windows, you have the C drive, and your hard drive is recognized as the C drive. In Linux, your hard drive, you can see here, usage of slash. This slash is actually your main hard drive. So, this is the actual uh, C drive, if you will, for Linux. And that's how Linux is recognized as a drive. So if I were to plug in an external hard drive, it would see it more as like a directory or a folder rather than a drive itself. So if I wanted to plug a hard drive into a Linux machine like this, I would have to mount it, which I do have a tutorial on mounting hard drives, um, but I would have to mount it to an actual directory and pin it to like a file to make it work. So when you add a hard drive, you can actually sort of bring several hard drives p and put them to one directory or one folder and mix them all together. So normally, you know, you like RAID 0 drives or something and it stripes it across it. Sort of what you're doing here too, you're taking drives and you're practically adding them to a directory. It's kind of a lot different than um, like Windows where you have separate drives and they're totally separate. Whereas in Linux, a drive is more of a directory rather than a drive itself. And this is just the drive space. So when you log in, like I said, you log into your account. So if we go ls, that's just l showing what's in this folder. If we go ahead and go ls um, dot dot slash, that is going to go up one directory. That's to my user account, Jacob. So if we go ls dot dot slash dot dot slash, this is the highest you can go, and this is the entire Linux operating system right here, and this is how it's based off of. If I go up one more directory, um, it's not going to go any higher than that. It's going to show the same exact files. So here's how it works. This is how it breaks down. You have this slash, 
which is the main that's as high as you can go. Then you have all these folders inside of it. So it's sort of just like the Windows where you have the C drive. This is as high as you can go. And then inside here you have all these other folders to keep the system running. So this would be your sort of your C drive. And these are all the folders that are part of the Linux operating system. So, so let's go ahead and uh, clear. And we'll go ahead and actually CD to dot dot slash dot dot slash. And now if we list, we are now in the main drive. This is practically the C drive equivalent uh, for Linux. And this is um, the entire system. So now this is where we're located. We are no longer located in the Jacob folder because we just went and changed our directory up two levels. So I'm going to go ahead and discuss what all these folders and stuff sort of are. Not all of them because not all of them are really important but so let's start with um the the bin folder the bind it stands for binary and this is just binary files stuff to do with like system uh applications and stuff like that you're never really gonna really screw with that boot is exactly as it sounds it has to do with booting the linux operating system so when the system boots it's gonna go to this f folder here and it's gonna pull up the kernel and stuff like that and that's what's gonna actually boot the system the DEV is devices, so devices is what's actually connected to the computer. Any disk drives, optical drives, anything like that that's going to be connected to the computer or the uh, system is going to be in the device folder. It's going to show up in the device folder. Again, um, a hard drive is seen as a sort of a folder when you plug it in rather than a drive itself. So it's seen as a device and it's actually um, mounted to the device folder. and. Uh, a good example of this is when you actually go to plug a hard drive or a flash drive into a server, you have to mount it. And I have it, like I said, I have a tutorial on that. And you'll notice that when you mount a, dr a drive, you're going to go mount um, uh, slash device slash, you know, um, SDD, say SDD, um, SDD, that would be SD drive D, SCSI disk, or SDC for SCSI to C, SDB, but you'll notice that no matter what, you have this slash device in front of it, and that slash device is indicating that it's gonna be in the device folder because it's a device. So that's what the device folder is. DVR files is just something I put on there because I was trying to get uh, files off my DVR that's not gonna normally be on there. Um, Windows is, uh, Windows, uh, ETC is, uh, this is the folder that is, um, all your configuration files. So um, I think it stands for etc. If I think, I, I don't know exactly what it stands for, but I know it contains all your configuration files. This is actually a very interesting one and probably one of the ones that you're going to modify the most. So if we go ls um, etc, you'll see that there's a bunch of uh, configuration files in here. So um, if we go to he here and we can go ahead and Samba is a program which I installed. It's a, it's a really cool program. We'll go ahead and ls etc slash samba and this is uh, really important to understand how this works um, this is something that you're gonna do in Linux a lot and you have to know how to do it um, so if anything this is probably gonna be the most important part that you learn in this video so in order to change stuff like in Windows normally you have a GUI to work with you have you can go to uh, not computer a uh, control panel and change all the settings from here. Well, in Linux, there is no GUI, or at least for Linux server or through a terminal. Um, so for a server operating system, you're not going to have a GUI to change settings. So to change anything such as like a network card, IP address, or anything like that, you're going to have to go like this. Everything is kept, all the settings are kept in a configuration file init.ds, anything like that. You'll see a lot of init.ds. These are all configuration settings um, or .config, things like that. So to change these, you're going to use what's called the visual editor. You have to sudo this command, vi, vi, which stands for visual editor. And this is going to take you to this file located in the etc folder, which holds all your configuration settings. It's going to ask for your password. And it's going to give you, uh, it's going to, right now it's just freaking out because, I don't know, it wasn't uh, saved right or whatever. We'll just go ahead and hit edit. And you can see that in here has a ton of little, it's a lot different than you, like a normal command window. 
you can go in here and you can change values of things so you can make things like whatever it may be you can change like the IP address of the server whatever you want that's not going to be in this particular folder but that's that's how this uh, visual editor works so you can just um, go into the insert mode and we'll go ahead and insert and we can change things like this so we can make uh, this this uh, share uh, folder here in the Samba this is the uh, folder which people would access on a Windows machine and you can make it no I don't want people to make it writable so ver whereas in Windows you may just go and hit selection and just click no or something like that this is how you'd have to do it in Linux you'd have to actually go in here and scroll down to where it is that you want to do or, or want to change and change it and you have to be sometimes very careful in here. You can make some pretty serious changes to system configurations. If you don't know what you're doing, you can screw the system up. So I recommend if you're new to Linux, you just download a copy on your laptop or whatever and dual boot it rather than actually go on a machine and do it if you don't know what you're doing because you can really screw stuff up. To, um, when you're in the visual editor, to get out of it, you just hit escape and then you're going to go ahead and hit uh, shift semicolon which is going to make a colon and then you can hit your several options you can go WQ which stands for write and quit that'll save the changes and you hit enter um, because I made a change that I don't want to make I can hit Q and enter sometimes if you don't save your changes it will know that and Linux will um, try and remind you it'll try and tell you hey you know you're not saving your changes and it'll flip out so you just put an exclamation point to tell it that you know for sure you don't want to save your changes I don't recommend you get in the habit of doing this because if you do you're gonna always do it and maybe sometimes you one time you will forget to save it and Linux will save you by saying uh, you forgot to save it and you might go you know holy crap and uh, you know go back and save it before you quit with an exclamation point which means I don't want to save it no matter what this will take you back to the uh, command window where you were before. So um, let's just go ahead and uh, clear it to go back to um, how it was clear and ls. So um, that's that. The home folder is basically just the users folder in Windows. It's basically equivalent. If we go ls home, you can see that I am in there, Jacob. So that's the users folder. That's going to hold like user files and information and crap like that. Um, so. I'm not too sure what these uh, image files are here, these two little image files, but um, I've never touched them or used them. I don't know what they are for. You can look them up if you want to, but they're probably um, not too significant in this case. Um, the LIB stands for library. Those two folders are your program files equivalent for Windows. So those are going to hold programs that you install, uh, little things that you, uh, when you sudo uh, wget or sudo apt-get this program, it's going to install the actual package when you uh, depackage it it's going to go into these library folders and then their settings will go here and sometimes extensions and crap will go in your var folder um, but this is where your folder, your main programs are installed so you have the lib and the lib64 the lib64 is just um, just like program files x86 and windows it's for 64-bit operating system so if you have a 64-bit operating system this is where your 64-bit programs are going to go. Lost and found. I'm not too sure what that's for. Um, I don't think there's anything actually in it. If we go ls lost and uh, we're just going to hit tab because it's the only one that is like that. And it's going to want, uh, if, because we're in the main um, folders of the hard drive, it's definitely going to want pseudo privileges. Um, so we have to sudo that and there is actually nothing in there so that yeah there's nothing in the lost and found folder the media folder there's practically uh, it's, it's a folder that you're not going to use for a server application because that's going to be things like your pictures videos and uh, things like that this is for more of a desktop environment so when you connect a media device or something uh, that's where it's going to grab media from so like I said if you go like here you have your pictures, music, games, and crap like that. That's what's going to be in that folder. But this is a server operating system, so um, you're probably not going to have anything in there. Uh, we can go ahead and try that real quick. And there's the CD-ROM. So um, that's going to be like if you install something or uh, put like music or something in a CD-ROM, that's what it's going to be. But again, in a server OS, you're not going to be 
working with that. The MNT is for mount, so when you mount something, mounted systems, anything that's mounted is going to be showing up in the MNT folder. And then, of course, if you mount it to a specific folder that you want to mount it to using the mount command, it's going to go to that folder. But uh, this is just mounted file systems. Um, a lot of these are insignificant. Uh, OFT is your optical drive, so when you have an optical uh, uh, media source in there, uh, such as a maybe a disk image file or something or whatever, or you want to install a program, it's going to show up. Whatever is on the optical drive disk is going to show up in your optical folder. So it basically takes what's in your optical drive and mounts it to the OFT folder. Um, PROC, I, I, I'm not sure of that off the top of my head. I think it's processor information or something to do with your processor is what I would imagine. Root, that's your root user, things like the stuff that your roots, uh, root files and crap like that, maybe permissions and stuff like that, but that's going to be the root user, the, the pseudo user uh, is what that is. Uh, not too sure what run is off the top of my head, we can go ahead and ls run. Um, okay, so run uh, is, yeah, run is going to be uh, things to actually start programs, that's what that is, so if you want to start a program, sudo uh, start or stop or restart, this is going to hit the run folder to start a program. So it's sort of like sort of like an exe, I guess, if you could say in Windows. So when you hit an exe, it runs, boom, like that. So Or an application or something like that. It's going to start an application. Samba is something that which I installed. Um, Sbin, I'm not sure. Se Linux, I'm not sure. They're insignificant files. You don't ever use those. Share is something which I created. Um, SRV, ls, SRV. Um, SRV, again, that's probably something I made was FTP. So that's, yeah, that's something which I have created. System, system's just going to carry system information files and stuff like that. Um, TMP is a temporary file system. So temporary files, which are only there for while the system is on, they're all deleted once you restart the system. That's what that is. USRs, user information, things like logs, uh, passwords, or I don't know about passwords, but logs and stuff like that are going to be stored in there. Same with the var. It's going to be um, program logging, things that happen on the server. It's all going to go to the var folder. Um, if you have a web server, this is one that you might touch kind of often. If you go um, ls var, uh, you have your www folder in there. Same with like if you have webmin and stuff on there. You'll find that some things useful are in there. You'll also notice that some there are quite a few things in here that you have up here as well. So like you have your optical your run and your library, things like that. Uh, you know, crash, maybe for like crash logs and stuff like that. Um, and cache is in there, backups, crap like that. But ls, um, www, uh, well, ls, um, var slash www. And that's uh, what you're going to have on your web server if you have a web server in your Linux. That's pretty much it for um, all this. Again, you have two little files out here. I'm not too sure what those are for. And then you have uh, something which I put in here. That's a little folder for uh, file for um, Webmin, um, which I'll do another tutorial on Webmin for, at a later date. But that's how the Linux file system works. It's The difference is, is the main thing is your main drive is seen as a file rather than a drive itself. And any attached drives are going to be seen sort of as files. And you just add them in a big file system. It's kind of weird. And then th I explained what each and every folder pretty much does, the basics of it, and related it to Windows. And I mean, that's pretty much it. You can go ahead and play around with it. Like I said, just put a copy on your computer or whatever. Um, and you can go ahead and s look through the files and stuff using just ls commands. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if anything that you learned from this video, probably the most important, it would be the sudo um, visual editor and how to make changes to the system. You can change pretty much absolutely anything in the system through the sudo vi and using that in configuration files inside the etc folder right there. So um, that's pretty much it for this video guys. Um, uh, make further tutorials on Linux. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want any uh, tutorials on anything uh, specific, uh, shoot me a message or whatever and I will probably most likely make a video on it. Um, that's pretty much it for now, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and have a good one.